Compare and contrast. When you compare and contrast, you think about what is the same and what is different. So here we're comparing dogs and cats. So remember in the middle is where we write what's the same about both things, either both animals or both stories. And then on these sides is what you write that is unique to that story, animal, or thing that is not the same. So dogs bark, we know cats meow, dogs chase cats, cats like to chase mice, dogs like to play, cats like to sleep, dogs need to be given a bath to get clean, cats can lick themselves clean, and what's the same about both of them is that they're both a type of pet and they both have fur. There's a lot, lot of other things that's the same about them. They both have teeth, they both have whiskers, you could go on and on. Today, I'm gonna model for you how to compare and contrast two stories, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, a book that you already know about, and Goldie Duck and the Three Beavers. I'm gonna show you how I would do it, and then I'll get into our story about a guard dog and a mailman. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. I'm not gonna read this story. I'm just gonna quickly go through it and skim it just to kind of review what the story is all about. So this is Goldilocks. She smells something in the woods and she decides to go to a stranger's house. She walks right in and she eats all three of those porridges. And she says, too hot, too cold. And then Baby Bears was just right. So here she sits in Papa Bear's chair, too hard, Mama's Bear chair, too soft, baby's chair, Baby Bear's chair, boom, it cracks, she breaks it. Then she gets into Papa's bed, it's too hard, Mama's bed, it's too soft, and baby's ba Baby Bear's bed is just right and she falls asleep. The three bears come home and they say, Someone's been eating my porridge. Someone's been eating my porridge. And then Baby Bear says, someone's been eating my porridge and it's all gone. Then Papa Bear says, someone's been sitting in my chair. Mama says, somebody's been sitting in my chair. And Baby Bear says, someone was sitting in my chair and it's broken. Then they go to the bed. They say the same thing. Someone's, in my, someone's been in my bed. Someone's been in my bed. Someone is still in my bed and they are sleeping. She wakes up, she screams, and she runs away. Okay, this one is very similar, but it does have differences. So let's read Goldie Duck and the Three Beavers. Goldie lived near Big Pond. One day, Goldie saw a pile of sticks in the pond. I wonder who lives there, she said. Goldie paddled to the pile of sticks. She did not see a way to get inside. Goldie dove under the water. She found a hole in the pile. Goldie swam inside the hole. Goldie swam up, up, up until she popped out of the water inside the pile of sticks. Goldie looked around. There were three neat beds made, made of leaves, I'm sorry. She jumped on the first bed, splat. She landed hard on the dirt. This bed is too hard, Goldie said. She jumped on the next bed, whoosh, leaves scattered everywhere. This bed is too soft, Goldie said. She jumped on the last bed, ah, said Goldie, this bed is just right. Just then, three beavers popped into the room. Goldie hid in the leaves. Oh my, said the biggest beaver, someone messed up my bed. Oh dear, said the next biggest beaver. Someone messed up my bed too. Aha, said the smallest beaver, and there she is. Goldie leaped from the leaves. Splash, she dove into the hole. Goldie paddled back home. I need to mind my own business, said Goldie. From then on, Goldie did not go into a house without being invited. Okay, I think it's easiest to always start in the middle where you're writing what's the same about both stories. So that's where I'm gonna start. 
Now, there are a lot of similarities between Goldilocks and the Three Bears and Goldie Duck and the Three Bears. And I'm going to start with they both got into three beds. They both got into three beds. And just, and in both stories, there was a hard bed, a soft bed, and a bed that was just right. So, all right, hard, hard bed, soft bed, just right bed. Okay, um, another thing that they both did is they both broke into a house. They just walked right in. They both broke into a house. In both stories, there were three animals that lived in that house. Oops. Now I'm gonna write what's different about the two stories. So in Goldilocks and the Three Bears, we have Goldilocks. In this story, we have the duck. And in this story, we have three bears, and in this story, we have three beavers. Oops. Three beavers. Okay, in Goldilocks, there are a couple things that happened in this story that didn't happen in the other story. So she ate porridge in this story, right? There was no porridge in the other story. She also broke a chair in this story. Little Duck did not break a chair in the story. In this story, Duck went back to his mom, went back to his mom um, to tell her that he had, or she, I think it's a she, she had learned, she had learned her lesson. That didn't happen in Goldilocks. Goldilocks just ran away and we don't know what happened after that. And actually they both ran away, so that would go in the middle. Okay, there are a lot of other things that happen in the story that are both different and the same, but I'm gonna stop there. Let's go ahead and dive into our story. The Mailman's Hat, written by Kitty Higgins and illustrated by Joel Snyder. Mr. Smith was a mailman and he wore a mailman's hat. He carried a pouch full of letters for the people of Dew Mellon Way. He also had a whistle that he would blow at every stop. When the whistle blew, people would come out of their homes to see if there was mail in their boxes. But there was one house where the whistle didn't blow. A dog named Duffy lived there. Duffy loved to bark woof, and bite. Each day, Mr. Smith would tiptoe up to walk to the house where Duffy napped, trying not to make a sound. He would put the mail in the box. Duffy was a very light sleeper. He would wake with a bark and a snap. Then he would chase Mr. Smith off the porch and down the block. Every day, rain or shine, Mr. Smith would bring the mail to Dumelon Way. And every day he would get chased by Duffy. That is until one gusty day in March. The wind was blowing very hard that morning. Mr. Smith's hat had flown off his head and into the air like a kite. His hat landed right on the top of Duffy's dish. Duffy jumped up from a sound sleep, barking at the noise. Mr. Smith was sure that Duffy would chew his hat to shreds and that he would be a mailman without a hat, but he had an idea. How do you think he's gonna get his hat back? That dog barks and bites and has his hat right on the porch. What do you think he'll do? Mr. Smith came to the porch. Duffy was waiting. He had the mailman's hat in his mouth. Mr. Smith reached into his pouch for the mail, but what he pulled out was a dog biscuit. Duffy didn't shred the mailman's hat or bark at Mr. Smith. Instead, he dropped the hat at Mr. Smith's feet, sat quietly, and waited for his treat. From that day forward, Mr. Smith brought more than just the mail to do Mellon Way. He brought a biscuit for his friend, Duffy, who wagged his tail whenever the mail whistle blew. Now we're going to read a nonfiction passage called Guard Dogs. I want you to think of one thing that's the same and one thing that's different between this story and the other story you read. 
guard dogs. Do you need to be protected from danger? If so, a guard dog is a great companion for you. A guard dog doesn't always need to be large and mean. Many different breeds of dogs can successfully guard their owners and possessions. Dogs bark at people they do not know. The noise lets its owner know that someone is approaching. Lots of people want dogs to keep them safe or look after things, so they buy guard dogs to do this job. Guard dogs have been trained to bark and growl at strangers or to attack people that come too close to the person or thing they are guarding. Guard dogs are very devoted to their owners. If you ever see a guard dog though, it is better to leave it alone. Remember that the dog may have been trained to bark, bite, or attack. This is the guard dog's job. For today's assignment, I want you just to write one thing that's the same and one thing that's different about both stories, the mailman's hat and guard dog. Bye guys, see you later.